Hi, everybody. This is an explanation, a very brief one, of how to deal with an unsecured debt collection. If you're about to be sued or likely to be sued because you have a legitimate debt or whatever the claim is, whatever, maybe it's not a legitimate debt, but let's just say it doesn't really matter, okay? If someone has the right or intends to sue you for a debt, um, what you want to do, first of all, is not be so concerned about the debt, but more about it's the ability of the creditor to collect uh, against the debt. Uh, collect for the debt to satisfy it. So to collect against things you have uh, money wise. So if someone sues you and gets a judgment, he can garnish your wages, he can uh, levy your bank account, he can encumber the uh, title to your real estate, can't foreclose on the real estate um, unless it's secured, it's like a mortgage or a HELOC, okay? That's the only time they could do that. Um, and Typically, vehicles are not a risk. So what you want to do is make a list analyzing your risk. So the list is going to include all the things you have the right to sell. Vehicles, vessels, aircraft. And it doesn't matter about your furniture and appliances. Nobody cares about that unless you file bankruptcy and you're not going to do that. So make a list of the things you have the right to uh, sell. Include a list of the things you have the right to spend. So money in the bank. What do you have the right to spend? Can you liquidate something in a stock account and spend that money? That is attachable. That is a risk. Cash in the bank. Wages are a risk. Now, in North Carolina, South Carolina, Texas, and Pennsylvania, wage garnishments are not permitted by unsecured creditors. So just realize that. In every other state, it's 25% of your net income that can be garnished or less. New York, I think, is 10%. That's actually... Not a bad deal if you have lots of debt and you just don't do anything. That's a pretty good settlement and a payment plan if they even garnish your wages. So let's just not talk about wages right now. Let's just talk about the things you have the right to spend and the right to sell. So vehicles are not a risk. You don't need to take the vehicle out of your name. You could put a lien on it. You could put a lien on today or you can wait until someone tows your car away, which is extremely unlikely. Because if you look around, okay, go drive through your town, Remember, look at all the dealership lots. They're stock full of cars. They can't get rid of them, okay? The market's horrible for selling cars. So why in the heck would someone that has half, half a brain go to the trouble of posting a bond with a sheriff and a tow truck company coming out there and uh, towing your car away and then trying to sell it at auction? It doesn't make any sense. People are not going to do that. Companies are not going to do that. The only time that may happen is if a person that you owe money to has some sort of emotional involvement, right? Like. I don't know, maybe it's a, a partner that feels wronged or something or a friend or it's not a friend anymore. I don't know. So vehicles are not a risk. I don't know if you all have yachts or airplanes. So vessels and aircraft probably are not a risk. Those are all, th those are easy to fix. So here's an example, true life example. IRS comes and tows somebody's car away. And next day he goes down to the DMV and puts a lien on the car. It was, a, it was an old used car, it was clear title. He put a lien on the car for the fair market value of the car. And of course, uh, if the IRS wants to sell it, then it has to pay the person or the lien holder, whoever the lien holder is. You can pretty much make it whoever you want. He has to pay the lien holder for the value of the car. Well, that means the IRS didn't get to take the car and sell it. The IRS actually had to buy your car. And they won't do that. What they'll do is bring the car back. And in this particular case, they brought the car back. It's kind of funny. So don't be so concerned about vehicles. On real, est <clears throat> real estate, if someone gets a judgment lien against you, and your name is on the real estate title of real estate in that state, the lien can encumber the equity in the property. Now or in the future until that lien expires. That's it. They could just encumber the equity. So if you think you're gonna sell your house anytime soon or you wanna leave it open to where you could sell your house, then you put a lien on the house before then. So if you have a right to sell your house and it has equity and that equity can be levied, I'm sorry, leaned against by a creditor who gets a judgment and it takes a year or two to get a judgment in the earliest cases, okay? Um, you simply put a lien on the property that covers the equity. So let's say you have a mortgage and you have another $50,000 in equity. All you would do is go get a lien document uh, and then you fill it out. There's a couple things you have to know to fill it out. And then you record it for the $50,000 that's equity. So that covers the equity that you have today. Now, if the equity goes up, that's not covered. If it goes down, well, then your lien's a bit higher than it needs to be, but that's okay. All right. So that's real estate.
vehicles, vessels, you understand, hopefully. Make that list, give it some careful thought. Bank accounts. Business accounts are subject to levy if the business is owned by the debtor. If someone's suing you and you own the whole business, well then it's subject to levy. If you're working from a limited liability company and you, you're 100% owner and you're, you know, you're running your business and you have regular cash flow, that business income is subject to levy for your personal debts. So the way to fix that is you amend the articles of association that are filed with the state and you add another person there. Now, don't add a spouse. It has to be a friend, a brother, uh, you know, someone 18 years older, older, presumably, uh, preferably, um, let's say you could probably go 17 years old, could be one of your children, but it must be someone else besides a spouse. If you add two people, you have two people, you add another person, you will have charging order protection that will prevent someone from trying to attach money in the company in its bank account um, until it sends money to yourself. So if your company makes you make makes a regular payment to you, that money is subject to levy. And there's actually a way around that, it's not hard. So I just wanna say, keep that in mind, a quick fix is to amend the articles, that gets rid of the ability of the creditor to levy your business income or its bank account. If you have a personal bank account, I would leave them open as long as possible uh, because you do want to close them before any levies come, because if the levy does come, the, the bank will charge you $100 to process a levy, even if only a dollar is levied out of your account, and then you'll owe the bank $100, and if you don't pay, that debt goes on your check systems report, and you won't be able to easily open bank accounts. So just keep that in mind. Close as many accounts as you don't need, and then replace your personal bank account with a limited liability account. And yeah, it's a business account, but you can use it for personal. In some cases, you can use it for personal and for business. In some cases, I can take an LLC and use it for personal banking, and I can use an, an, the same LLC with a different bank account for my business. Everybody's situation is a little bit different. So you can, it's very versatile. Use a limited liability company with at least two owners. Now, of course, you can do other things like you can make a trustee owner and all that. It does not have to be that complicated. Just have two owners that are not married, and you can, you can open an account, and replace your personal banking needs. This will avoid a levy on your personal account and your business account, okay? Um, yeah, let's see that. So stock accounts, that's a little more involved because you're gonna have to change your stock account over to uh, a, a limited liability company. You can use the same limited liability company for your stock account. Same thing for cryptographic currency. Now, stock is unlikely to be levied just because it takes a little more effort to levy against that. And I, and I really, I mean, I've seen over 30,000 of these cases. I've worked on 30,000 or more of these cases. And I don't recall anyone ever levying a stock account. Now, if you filed a bankruptcy, that's a different world. That's why I don't file bankruptcy because that's really just a payment plan that just exposes you to all your creditors in a different way. Um, cryptographic currency, that is not a risk. Now, it could be a risk. It could be. It's just that Attorneys are not yet sophisticated enough or understand cryptos enough to go and try and attach those, those, uh, that value. Now, the IRS is starting to understand this, and the IRS is starting to, and bankruptcy courts, I believe, will make you liquidate your crypto coins to pay debts. So don't get yourself into that situation. But when it comes to an unsecured debt collection in a lawsuit, cryptocurrency is not really a risk, and it's so liquid that you can move away from the risk. You can literally go from wallet to wallet. So don't be so concerned about cryptos. If you manage the cryptos the way I recommend, you're already protected. Don't even have to think about it. That's why I like doing what I do because it's gonna cover you even if you don't think about it, okay? But if you're new to this, um, the limited liability company will protect you in the same way that it, it can be used to protect your bank accounts for your business and personally, right? If, you have, if you're facing a wage garnishment, do not be so concerned about it. I know I don't like to have these guys get one dime, especially the banks. I don't like to see them collect anything, but it is not such a bad deal if they're gonna levy 25% or 10% of your wages. Now, if you desperately need to have that stopped, there's a very good chance that you're exempt from the levy. Um, I don't wanna go into too much detail on how to get that exemption, but I will tell you this. If a, le a wage levy is gonna come from a creditor, the best recommendation I have is let them 
do the wage garnishment at the full amount that they're going to do it at. Because if you try to get an exemption, you may reduce the amount, but then you'll expose yourself to other creditors and you'll waive all the protections. So that means your boss can fire you because you have a debt problem where before, if you let them take the full 25% or so, your boss would have civil and criminal penalties for firing you for that situation. Now that usually doesn't happen. I mean, I don't know what your deal is with your boss and all that. So, but anyways, that's what uh, the law is on that. If you want a legal reference, I'll just leave you with this one thing. It's called the Consumer Credit Protection Act. Okay, that actually protects people. That's why you don't need to do a bankruptcy. That's why you don't need to do a debt settlement. That is why you do not need to do a consolidation because we have a law. It's called the Consumer Credit Protection Act. Now that law is adopted into every state law except four states, I believe four. It's in 46 states. The four states that don't have that law are the four states that don't allow wage garnishments, Texas, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and South Carolina. So don't be scared. If you're getting sued, might get sued. Um, these are the things to look at. Look at your, your risk of collections. These are the basic steps is how to fix it. On a personal bank account, I do have an alternative. I use what's called a settlement trust. The trust is not some sort of special thing other than the only thing it's going to do is change your signature rights on the account so that the bank sees that you do not have the exclusive rights to withdraw the funds, even though you're the only signer. I write this trust account so that the beneficiary calls the shots. The beneficiary who is not an account holder and not a signer has all the rights. And somehow for some crazy reason, the banks let me open these accounts. So you can, as an option, if you're in California, especially, in fact, I wrote this for Californians, um, use the settlement trust account. Just ask me about it. I will send you instructions that explain everything. And then if you send me back the information, I can create one for you. Um, but otherwise, the limited liability company is going to protect you from unsecured debt collections. So look at your risk first. Don't be so concerned about the total debt and what they're going to do to you and all these law firms and the, and the court. Because if you do what I'm explaining here, you'll avoid the need to even show up in court. You can literally let them get a judgment and be done with it and move on with your life and go do something. In fact, while they get this judgment against you and try to levy, you can literally start a new investment and start another business and still not be impacted by the debt collection. So I hope that relieves some stress. But anyways, um, thanks for listening.